For this video, I'll be working through question one of the 2018 uh, scholarship physics or physics scholarship exam. Right. Question one. Let me see that. A railway full of sand is released from point C. The wagon oscillates on a vertically curved track between A and C with simple harmonic motion period of 60 seconds. The effects of friction can be ignored. Sweet, so I'll just quickly highlight that just so we can take that into account later. Um, state the conditions that must apply for the motion to be simple harmonic motion. So I'll pause it, write the answer, and discuss. Right, so I've said, um, I've, I've written, this is essentially the definition, force equals negative kx. There must be a restoring force linearly proportional to the negative displacement. So that's, that is the definition. There needs to be some sort of restoring force. Um, it's got to be a linear restoring force, so if you pull it back, um, the force increases linear, linearly, um, and it needs to be, the force needs to be negative the displacement. So if you push, you know, if you, uh, like, a force that way, the uh, displacement, uh, the what, if you, you know, how would I explain this? If the displacement is this way, the force needs to be that way because they need to be opposite each other. Right. Show that the maximum speed attained is 15.7 metres per second. So I'll go over sort of everything about this. So here, here he starts, we're assuming that the, what's this, the wagon starts at the top. So if it starts at the top, uh, we have x is equal to y cos theta. <laughs> that describes the position. Um, the second differential of that is going to be V is equal to uh, negative A omega sine theta. Um, and the maximum, well, the maximum sine theta can be is 1, so it's just equal to uh, negative A omega, which is equal to negative, um, what's my amplitude? Amplitude is half of 300 meters, so it's 150 meters times, and then omega is 2 pi f, so 2 pi times, and 1 over the period is f, so 1 over 60, um, and that equals negative uh, 15.708 metres per second, um, and then we'll take the absolute value of that, because it's just asking for the maximum speed, not direction, so the negative gives a direction, but we're just looking for the maximum speed, um, and the negative doesn't really mean anything in this case, so um, V max, I'll just write this down here, V max, um, is equal to 15.7 meters per second, negative one. Right, there we go. Um, next question. When the wagon is halfway between B and C, calculate its approximate height above B. Right, so this is a bit of a, it's a bit of a tricky one. There's quite a subtle, elegant way to do it. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through that way, um, as opposed to I think how the answer schedule does it. Um, just because it uses phasor diagrams, you know, I'll start doing it. So we're gonna, we're gonna draw our like, try and draw a neat circle, Ooh, that's a horrible circle, whatever. So we're gonna draw our phasor diagram. <laughs> that's a terrible phasor diagram. Um, <clears throat> put a line there, should use a compass. Um, where is it now? Oh, what are we gonna do? We are gonna have, the position is here, so this is, 75 meters, I'm just gonna sketch out some stuff. This whole length from like here to here, yeah, the radius of the circle is 150 meters. Yeah, and then right about when the position, so when the cart is here, its velocity will be up here somewhere. And its position would have started here, so that's because it starts at max, and it would have wound its, round, wound its way round to about here. So this will be its position, and this will be its velocity. And this is our phasor diagram. Um, and this is why, um, and the distance from here to here is 75 meters. The distance from here to here is 150 meters, because it's still the same radius of the circle. And there's a little bit of a trick we can do. This is theta, and this is how much of the uh, angular distance it traces around. You can actually find out what theta is from there, find out what the velocity is, and then from there, substitute it into an energy equation. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to use an energy equation, energy equation, to figure out how much potential energy um, 
is left here, which will tell us the gravitational height or gravitational potential energy, which will give us a height. We know what the maximum height is. That's just going to be the total kinetic energy. Um, this times half mv, or this, this being the velocity half mv squared, that's going to be equal to mgh. Um, and then that would tell us the total gravitational height from the conservation of energy. And it turns out to be 12.58 metres. Um, but instead, so we'll try and find theta. Um, so as we can see, theta, we have the hypotenuse and we have the adjacent. So we're going to use A and H, which means cos. So theta is equal to cos inverse the adjacent, which is 75 metres. 75 metres over 150 metres. And that'll give us cos negative 1, 1 over 2, because 75 is half, is half of 150. And if you put that in your calculator, it gives you 60 degrees. Or if you like using the radians, that is pi over 3. And if you do calculus and you know those magic triangles, cos of half does equal pi over 3. And it pays to keep that in mind, but if you don't do calculus, it's not the end of the world. Right. We're going to find out its instantaneous velocity at this phasor angle. So we're going to have to use the fact that we started here at y equal, uh, x equals y cos theta. We're going to use this formula here. Um, it gives us is equal to... We've got negative a omega uh, sine theta. Just remember that theta, uh, well, I'm not gonna, theta is equal to omega t, so I'll put it up here. Theta is equal to omega t. Um, but for the most part, we don't really keep it as theta until you, until you desperately need to put in the angular f uh, frequency in times of velocity. I think it's angular frequency in simple moment motion. Right. Um, and that is going to be equal to negative 150, because that's the amplitude, times 2 pi times 1 over 60, um, sine uh, pi over 3, and that gives me 13.6 meters per second, negative 1. I hope I can fit. Sweet. And now we have, we have the maximum velocity. We have the velocity at the halfway point. The, the difference in energy between these two, um, no, that's not true. Okay, I'll, I'll write it out expression-wise. So the gravitational potential energy we have at the halfway point is equal to the maximum kinetic, the maximum kinetic energy that we would have had, which is essentially, you can, this is the maximum gravitational potential energy. So this is the maximum kinetic energy at the bottom, which is equal to the maximum gravitational potential energy at the top, because it's frictionless, the whole system's frictionless. Um, there we go. Plus the uh, gravitational potential energy we're going to have. Um, and that is, oh yeah, so this is the maximum gravitational potential energy is equal to the kinetic at that point plus the potential, which is equal to Ek max, because this is, and this is at max height, max height. I'll try and write that in. There we go. Um, Substituting in the values, this equals um, half mv max squared is equal to half mv squared plus mgh. And then I'm rearranging for h. And we get uh, v max squared minus v squared um, divided by 2g is equal to h which is equal to 15.7 squared minus 13.6 squared divided by 2 times 9.81. I put brackets around this because it's times in there, and that equals to 3.136 metres height. Height is 3.14 metres because I'm pretty sure everything's three SF. Yeah, it is. Um, so that's that's the like the the eloquent way to do it. The other way to do it um, is I can't remember how the other way to do it. Uh, conservation of energy. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll leave. That's that's the eloquent way to do it. And you should always use phasor diagrams when doing these simple harmonic motion questions. Um, yeah, just always use phasor diagrams. Right, I'll fold this over. The wagon has a small hole from which the sand leaks onto the rail track at steady rate. Sketch the height profile of the sand on the graph below and explain the shape of the profile. State any assumptions made. Um, so we'll just think about this for a second. 
at the middle, it's moving really, really quickly. It's, you know, max velocity. At the tops, it stops and turns around. So at the tops, it's going to, spend, it's going to be spending a lot of time there. Um, at the middle, it's going to be whizzing past and then back up to the top again. So most of the sand should deposit at the top. There will be sand deposit in the middle, but then, and because the whole system is symmetrical, the other side will look like that. Um, I'll pause it, write the answer, describing, and then. Right, so I've said the sand is highest at the sides as it is moving the slowest, the s so spends more time depositing sand there, assuming sand doesn't block the track. Um, that's just sort of like a think about it question. Um, not really sure what else you can sort of, how you can puzzle that, other than just, it's going to be going fast in the middle, less time in the middle, less sand. Right, when the wagon arrives it's at the back of the sea, at back, so this is sea up here. The remaining sand is suddenly dumped from the wagon. Explain what the effect this removal of mass will have on physical parameters of the wagon's motion. So, this is like an age old, I don't know, it's like a, it's a physics question I love to ask my students. Um, if you have a wagon, empty wagon, moving along a frictionless track, um, and it starts raining, and the wagon slowly gets filled up with water, what happens to the wagon? And yeah, you know, the kids think about, oh, nothing, it'll slow down, it'll speed up, so on and so forth. And the way to think about it, there's two ways, conservation of momentum and just plain old forces. Plain old forces, if you're having to accelerate the raindrops up to speed, it'll slow the wagon down because Newton's thought, third law for every force is, and you know, it's counter force. Um, that's a terrible way to explain it. Anyway, it'll slow the wagon down Whereas, like, if you so, yeah, in this situation, the wagon is just dumping the sand. There's no horizontal forces acting on the wagon, um, so there's no horizontal accelerations. So the wag wagon's not going to change its horizontal velocity. Con so that's one way to explain it. Um, I'll pause it, write out my answer, and then discuss the momentum way. Right. So I've written no effect. As the sand falls out, it takes with it momentum. Since the mass of the wagon is also decreasing, there is no change in velocity at any point. Um, momentum decreasing, mass decreasing, velocity is the same. Um, now that I reread this question, I just realised the wagon wasn't moving um, at all. So that's kind of like it doesn't, yeah, this doesn't really take into account. So the other explanation is at sea, it loses all that mass, so it's lost. Well, if it's not moving, it's not really losing anything. Yeah, it's, you could just swap it out with a lighter load, um, and the acceleration's still going to be the same because it's gravity that's accelerating it. Okay, that's, yeah. Anyway, right, last question. The track A to C is the arc of a circle. Is it really? By first calculating the radius of the circle, discuss whether the original assumption that this simple harmonic motion uh, is valid. So what we're going to do is sketch up the situation. So we have, here's our, I don't know, I'll try and draw it there. Um, I'll try and do it over here. Here is the base of our track. Let me see that, yeah. And this is sort of the slopey thing. Um, this here is 150 metres, because it's half of 300. Um, we'll just chuck this up here. And this, this here should trace out a full circle, so I'm not going to, oh, I can't turn you around, whatever. Full circle like so. Um, we know this height, well, we, do we know this height? We haven't found this out yet, but we can find this, out, this height out pretty easily. It's just all the kinetic energy turned into gravitational potential energy. Um, this here will be, what is this? This is the radius, R. This here is also the radius, R. And then we will put a dotted line across here. Um, we've got theta here, because this is what we need to find. We need to find, because simple harmonic motion, it's only valid for stuff that's like swinging side to side under the influence of gravity if it's under 10 degrees. Um, if you want to like find out why that is, just Google the small angle approximation for simple harmonic motion. In fact, there are, I Googled quite a while ago to try and show a proof to my students, and there aren't that many. You need to go sort of back into old school textbooks um, and look through um, the old school proofs that are doable for a high school student. Um, most of the ones you'll find on the internet are quite complex and don't explain it very well. Um, but you might be able to ask your physics teacher and they might be able to explain it to you, maybe not, who knows. Um, anyway, so I need to find out what this height is. So this height, height max, 
um, is equal to, uh, it's just mgh is equal to half mv max squared. Um, and that is basically, re rearranged, this is equal to v max uh, squared over 2g. You can figure that out, just cancel the masses, chuck the two underneath. And this, once you plug it in, is equal to 12.58 meters. Sweet as. How does this get me any closer to finding this angle? In order to find this angle, I need to find what this radius is. Um, and I can find that using um, a like Pythagorean expression. Um, knowing that this, this height here is 12.8 meters, 12.8 meters, 5.8 meters, 12.58 meters. This requires a little bit of algebra wizardry, but this hypotenuse, so we have R squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. A squared is this length here, so it's going to be R minus 12, because I'm going to do this triangle from here down to here up to here again. So it's R minus 12.58, R, min, uh, yeah, R minus 12.58 squared plus 150 squared. 150 squared. There we go. And if you expand this all the way out, we get, I'm going to move this R to this side and then just blow this whole thing up. So I get minus R squared minus 2R times 12.58, um, that would times all the way through, um, plus 12.58 squared, um, plus 150 squared, and then this R squared, because you know there's brackets, I'm going to plus this last R squared over there, um, and that is equal to zero. And then if you rearrange, you will get, you can just R is equal to, this cancels, that cancels, we get these two on this side, so it's going to be 12.58 squared plus 150 squared divided by this times that, 12.58 times uh, 2, so 2 times 12.58 that is equal to 900.56. And it told us to find the radius first, and that's what we've just done. Um, now what we need to do is just use a little bit of trigonometry to find what this theta is. Um, I'll just chuck this in this box over here. Can I chuck that there? So we're going to have theta is equal to... What do we got there? What, what, what we use? We will use the hypotenuse and the opposite. So we'll just use that line there and that line there. Um, hypotenuse opposite is going to be sine, so sine inverse. The opposite is 150. 150 over 900.56 bracket and that is going to give me 9.558 degrees. Ugh, whatever. Um, I'm going to write this better. Theta is equal to 9.58 degrees. So well, I'll write this over here. Theta is less than 10 degrees, so can be treated treated as simple harmonic motion. Um, and I'll just put it's on the limit. Limit. Anything more than 10 degrees, it starts veering off. <laughs>